Everyone, so we are on to the last unit of AP statistics, which has to deal with inference for slope. So if you couldn't tell, it's very similar to the last couple of units, except now it's for slope, right? So got your confidence interval, significance test, um, and just a couple more nuances in between. So we got a new symbol here. We got this B-looking symbol. That is beta. That's the slope of the least squares regression line. So instead of trying to estimate the true population uh, proportion or true population mean, now it's the true population slope. And we're going to do this using sample data, just like before, okay? So the big question we're trying to answer is, is there a linear relationship? So how the general data process collection goes, you can also do this with the experiments, but the most common way is uh, just a random sample. So you just obtain your random sample of data points that we plotted for you. And you need to differentiate between your explanatory variable or your independent variable, and then the dependent variable or your response variable. So this makes more sense with something like an example. So if I'm trying to say is, um, let's say we have study time on the x-axis and test scores on the y-axis. So if I increase study time, in my mind, I think that results in a higher test score, right? So this would be upward sloping like that. So that's what I think is gonna happen, okay? We don't know if it's true. And so what I would do is if I have a student population of 500 people, then I would take 10 of those students just to satisfy the 10% condition because we also want independence, as we'll see later. Then just measure each student's test score and their study time, right? And then we would plot those data points. So if I erase this and we would, let's see, blue, and we'd plot those points on there. And let's say that in this case, I don't know, this is not 10 points, but in this case, there does because we got those data points, if we draw a least squares regression line, looks something like that, that's totally off, but whatever. That looks relatively linear, and then we can estimate the slope of that and say it's like a strong positive uh, linear slope or whatever. And so in that case, you would satisfy it. But more specifically, you can't just, you know, randomly throw out numbers like that and estimate the points. You need to actually do a detailed procedure using a p-value or confidence interval. So let's dive into it. Confidence interval, panic, C squared, same thing as before. P, your parameter of interest. This case is beta, the true slope of the population least squares regression line. And then just talk about your two variables in context that you're trying to see if there's a linear relationship between those two. Now for the assumptions conditions, this is why you usually won't be asked to do a full procedure on the AP exam because there's five of them to check. Um, you need to check the residual plot or scatter plot to see if the data is approximately linear. Check for independence, 10% condition, or if it's independent observations, if it's an experiment. Then you got your dot plot or box plot or residuals. You don't want any strong skewness or outliers. And along with that goes, you want uh, equal standard deviation or variance uh, if the residual plot does not show increasing or decreasing variance. So here is what we want to see, right? So we have sample data, whatever, looks relatively linear. And then the residuals, you can see no clear patterns increasing or decreasing. But if we have data that is not linear whatsoever, you can see this is a W looking shape. Well, our residuals is gonna reflect that, right? Our residuals isn't random. There is a decreasing, then increasing pattern, right? That's not what we want. In this case right here, we wouldn't be able to uh, do our confidence interval or significance test. The last condition is just you need random samples or assignment if it's an experiment. All right, let's move on to the name of the test, just T interval for slope of a population least least squares regression line at blank percent confidence usually that confidence is given to you then to calculate the interval the actual interval you can use their use your calculator or just manually calculate it that is the estimated slope from your sample b plus or minus your critical t star value times that standard error that formula usually is given to you directly in the problem but you can also calculate with the formula on your reference table that will be equal to your interval and just keep a note degrees of freedom and minus two in case you do use your calculator to calculate that uh, interval. Then finally, your conclusion, same thing as before, we are blank percent confident interval from blah, 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 captures the true slope, uh, captures the slope of the true least squares regression line relating your two variables in context. So I always remember to do it in context because AP graders love to see that. All right, let's move on to the last thing in AP statistics. It's a significance test for slopes, and we're going to be using phantoms, just like before, okay? Your parameters and your assumptions and conditions is the exact same as your uh, confidence interval. So if you need to refresh on that, just go back in the video. 
uh, your hypotheses now because you are doing a significance test, right? So your null is usually set to zero because you're under the assumption that there is no uh, linear relationship in the beginning. But this can change, like, let's say, for example, a scientist is trying to disprove a model that already shows a linear relationship, then your uh, beta value would be, say, equal to, like, one. The alternatives would be greater than zero, less than zero, or if it's a two-sided test, not equal to zero. The name of this is two test for the population slope for the least squared regression line. And then for your test statistic, it is your estimated slope from the sample minus your population slope. So keeping up this beta value is based on your null value. Because remember, just like before, when we're conducting significance tests, what we're doing is we're running tests under the assumption that the null is right. And then based on that, we get a p-value, like how uh, likely is that if the null was true, we get a result as significant or more significant as this, and that's denoted as a p-value. And then based on that, we can uh, reject HO and then conclude HA or whatever. So to actually obtain the p-value, it's kind of interesting for slopes. You actually need the raw data if you want to use a calculator command which is t-test for slope, but you should probably know how to manually calculate it, which is get your t-value from above using the equation, find your degrees of freedom, which is sample size minus two, and then just use t-cdf. And if you want a note about how to identify whether to put your t-value as the lower or the upper bound, pause the video and get this in. All right, for the conclusion, since the p-value of blank is less than or greater than our alpha value of blank, uh, usually that's given as well, or if it's not given, just assume it's 0 0.05. We can reject or fail to reject HO and conclude or cannot conclude HA that a linear relationship exists in the population between your two variables. Guess what? In context. That's right. Always say everything in context. Okay. And that's it. That is the entirety of AP statistics. So go crush that AP exam uh, and subscribe for good luck. And thank you guys for watching the video. And I'll see you guys in the next one.